Those of you out there that watch my channel probably noticed that yesterday I put out quite a few videos on a gun that I was very excited about. That was the new Kimber K6S revolver. I actually did a couple of videos where I showed pictures, talked about the pictures, talked about the gun, etc. Which brings me to one point here. I was a little uh, offended today that Guns and Ammo Magazine put out an article saying a first look at the Kimber K6S. Well, you mean first other than like the three videos I made yesterday about it. Well, in one of my videos yesterday, I went over the pictures of the gun and said, boy, I hope this is a hoax. Well, turns out it wasn't a hoax. It's uh, more of just a disappointment than it was a hoax. Now, everyone knows I love wheel guns, so, you know, I'm not going to be too hard on it. There are some things I like about it, like uh, it's stainless and uh, it's not not stainless. But beyond that, there's not a whole lot about this gun I'm excited about right now. I mean, Kimber had a chance here to be truly innovative. They were starting from the ground up with no preconceived notions of what a revolver should be because they weren't building on anything that already existed. They were building something new. But instead of being innovative, they chose to be imitative. And instead of making something new, they just made a six-shot double-action-only Ruger SP-101. And looking at that shrouded barrel design they used and the size of the frame, I'm betting it's even a cast gun like the Ruger's. So for those of you out there that said it's a Kimber, so it's going to have a lot of mem parts, well, it might be kind of one giant mem part, depending on how you look at it. If you ask me, this gun is like the worst example of what happens when CEOs of company decide what guns should be made instead of people that actually shoot the guns. I mean, I could just see a boardroom of guys sitting around in suits right now going, you know what, guns are popular Glocks, and Glocks don't have a hammer, and you know what I always see the Internet's people talking about is the capacity, so let's add an extra round. That's what matters. No hammer and an extra round. Now, you know, semi-auto guys might care about those things, but revolver guys don't. Revolver guys and semi-auto guys are very different in what we look for in a gun. We don't find the same things important because they're two very different platforms. Now, there are some advantages to a double action only revolver. Well, there's one advantage actually, and that is that they can fire from a pocket. These types of guns were designed so they can be fired from inside a trench coat without risk of material getting between the hammer and the round or the firing pin and making the gun not go off. That's why these guns were popular with off-duty cops, detectives, private investigators, etc. But that was their only real advantage, that they could be fired from inside like a trench coat pocket. But to get that small advantage of being able to be fired from a pocket, they had to give up the biggest advantage the revolver has. Anyone that really loves revolvers will tell you their biggest advantage is the inherent accuracy of a fixed barrel coupled with a feather light single action trigger pull. When you need to make that first shot count and you can cock back that hammer and pull a trigger that you can't even feel the pressure needed to fire it, you can make that first shot go where you need it. When you're putting that bullet between the shoulder blades of a bad guy who's 40 yards away, you're going to want that advantage. And you give up that advantage completely with the new double action only Kimber. But you know, giving up that advantage isn't even the worst part. Like I said before, the worst part is they could have been innovative and they chose to be imitative. I mean, if you're going to start from the ground up, why not do something innovative like the Chiapa Rhino and have a six o'clock barrel, something that handles recoil far better than the standard 12 o'clock barrel. There's no question about that. Anyone that's actually shot one of these that loves revolvers can tell you there's no comparison between the way a regular revolver handles full load 357 Magnum and the way the Chiapa Rhino handles them. So what we could have gotten from Kimber would have been a solid stainless steel, American-made six-shot revolver that handled recoil better than any of its competitors on the market today, but instead we just got more of the same. And not even the best of what's available today. It wasn't even better than the other ones that are out there. In fact, in some ways, this gun will be very niche because who really cares about one more round if you lose the advantages of a revolver? Now still, I'm going to try to keep an open mind. I am going to try the gun and see if I like it. Maybe it's a great gun. I hope it's a great gun. What I really hope is that this is maybe just a first step. Maybe this is a first step towards doing something truly innovative. And maybe this is a first step towards more manufacturers getting into the revolver business. But for now, all I can do is judge this gun on what it is. And right now, what it is is something that I'm not as excited about as I was yesterday.